fly. I'll have a mutant fly. Hello, Yar. You'll need some protection. Ion zone. Uh-uh. Shift chroma. Intensify. Okay. Now you need some weapons. You have a formidable enemy. The Kotile. Watch it, Yar. He has a lethal drone and some other tricks up his sleeve. Spiral. Go. Oh, good move, Yar. Now, I have a surprise for you. A Zorlon cannon. Use it, Yar. Fire again. Fire. <laughs> That's revenge. Yar's revenge. Yes, sir. Yar's revenge. For Atari 2600, and I wouldn't call this a review because we already know it's awesome. It's it's one of the best Atari 2600 games ever, and one of the early uh, video game releases that was one of the best ever. I play on game six. And it is awesome. I'm playing this on my original Atari 2600 that, when I, in 1981, I believe... My grandfather presented it to me and my two brothers on Christmas as a surprise. And you know how it is when you get that video game system. It is just the best. And we got... Ooh. We got Missile Command. Pac-Man, which... You know, it was alright to have Pac-Man back then. It was better than nothing. And then Yar's Revenge. Just the crown... Crown Jewel. And so many great things that have already been said about it. I'm just really stoked. Uh, apparently Howard Scott Warshaw accepted my friend request on Facebook. And, oh man, that hypes me up. I, I better not abuse the privilege. I'm just going to try to leave him alone and bask in the glory of, uh, of I don't know, doing reviews and, and all that. I guess I, a lot of you guys are, what a nice guy that he accepts all of our friendship requests. It's really neat, man. I'll be 50 soon. And, uh... I'm sure Howard knows he, much like George Lucas, he, he presented something that really accentuated our childhoods. And that's no small feat. And uh, we take that very seriously. Now, i I got to point out some things that have already been said a million times. I love the gameplay aspects here. The fact that if you can manage to shoot that swirly shot when it's coming at you, which is really hard, it's like the fuzz bomb in Star Castle, and I know the it was inspired originally to make a Star Castle type game, but I'm glad we got this. And uh, for you to be able to hit that mid air, they give you an extra yar, and I think that was very well thought out and kind of a little bit ahead of its time, as far as not just back then you could have probably just done something with graphics and made everybody happy, but uh, really some gameplay thought went into the gameplay there. It didn't take me and my brothers as long as kids to realize that Game 6 was the game to play, even though we normally like things just easy. The sport of Game 6, where you have to earn your ability to get your cannon to fire and be loaded, is a, is a worthwhile challenge. Just missed it. And I also like how even though you can shoot, which is really nice, I mean, we didn't get cheated even though it's a flying fly, everyone likes to shoot. However, when you shoot at the shield pits in game six, they do nothing for you as far as earning enough trons, as he calls them, which is really neat, to earn, uh, you know, build up your cannon. So, the risk versus reward, you want to get your cannon fired, you got to It's almost better to get in there and... Well, it is better to get in there and touch the Kotal before he changes on you. And uh, I like that risk. That's another great gameplay factor. Neutral zone giving you a break from this dude that really starts to hound you. And just like, um, and it's, it's amazing how this game doesn't seem too repetitive even though you're playing the same screen. Largely because when that screen turns blue, when you hit that 70,000 points, oh man, it's like you just walked into an oasis, man. It, that bright blue is just so beautiful. And the fact that my old Atari 
is working for me perfectly. This is just... I'll never get tired of it, even though I have plenty of video game systems, and I do like chicks and stuff, but I'm liking this at the moment. And, uh... It's just awesome, man. And, of course, we all remember the comic book that came out along with it. I make sure... I got two of these. I make sure to have... It's really neat. It really got you kind of hyped. Very well fleshed out. And even though we were all young, I mean, we were... We were Star Wars fans back then, and I'm glad... I'm glad Howard and, uh, and company didn't, you know, dumb down to us. You know, gave us some nice detail and and stuff we can understand. Uh, even though we were kids, we could understand, and the detail makes it all the richer. And then there's the other instructions. I like how it mentions how it turns blue and then gray and pink. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, man. My mom has a story... She considers it, a, considers it a bad thing, but I think it's a good thing. My mom says pretty early when we got it, when we went to bed, even though she wasn't a gamer before that on video games, but she's a fun lady, she apparently, like, picked it up and read the directions a little and saw that you, you can get to, like, a pink level. And she spent, oh, she spent all night, apparently. I remember getting up in the morning to go to school, and she just looked all beat and haggard and, and unhappy, really, because she was addicted and spent the whole night and she never she never did drugs that I know of so she kind of felt like she lost control and was a poor mom as a f and to this day me and my brothers are trying to say no it's a beautiful thing mom I mean the whole selling point of a good art video game is it's got addictive gameplay and if it could just get you to play all night that's a beautiful thing and uh, it's like don't worry mom we made our own breakfast or whatever I just wish there we go um, racking up those guys. Um, I understand if you're going to play on difficulty A on game 6, that's really a challenge. I've recently gotten, I've rolled it and got over a million uh, on game 6, game B, but I realized that just would not be so easy on uh, on game, uh, on difficulty A, which means there's still a lot much for me to, to do with Yara's Revenge before I can say I'm over it. Yes, have you? Have you played Atari today? I love it, man. I mean, I do have other interests, but uh, ooh, it's a big thing to me. And to, to get to find the Atari Age uh, website and find all you guys that also or our Facebook page and find all you other guys that like it like me, it's really neat, man. I mean, I I can live. A, I'm a pretty lonely, dude. Uh, always have been, but at least I got this group. Not to sound all gay, but you know, it's just nice that I can connect with you guys, and then we can always avoid it. You know, turn off your computer when you don't want to connect. But it's better than nothing, man. And Yars Avenge, I think I said, uh, I probably said enough here. And I am sucking up to Howard Scott Warshaw because he deserves it. And and E.T., of course I have it. And uh, how do you make a game in a month, man? The guy just killed it with the Yars Avenge. It's a legend, and it's nice to have some legends still with us. And he's being friendly and taking people's friends' requests. And it's all fun. And, um, so that's my high score on Yars Revenge Difficulty B Game 6. Uh, I don't have a screenshot, but I'm not a liar. But, um, Game uh, Difficulty A, I mean, look a lot smaller. So I got a lot to do if I'm going to master Yars Revenge Game 6. There's nothing like it when you're running low on Yars, and you and then you have to fight back and start getting that thing that's flying in the mid the swirly in midair, so you can, uh, get your extra guys built back up. It's... It's got the synergy, the synergy, I say, of, say, Defender or Robotron. And the synergy is, as you guys know, I'm not a very smart guy, but that energy between the sound and the gameplay and that extra third thing that's like the magic, the secret sauce. And for an Atari early game to have it, and we all knew it had something really special. And, uh, you know, you'd have your friends who started getting di different systems and television, ColecoVision, and uh, if you had Yars Revenge... Maybe some demon attack on the side. You know, you felt still proud. And then, of course, later, Pitfall. You felt proud. I mean, you know, sometimes I was like, I only have Atari. 
But Yars Revenge gave us something with that extra kick ass. It had it had balls. Let's just face it. Even though the and the kids commercials show the little kids, but you could feel good about playing it as an older guy, and it's a great game. Well, I just want to. So there you go, man. Uh, have a good night. Love my Yars Revenge. Peace out.